Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this Red Gaming Tech video. Hope you're having an amazing day. My name is Amata, and let's get stuck right in to our first topic, which is some very interesting comments from AMD regarding you know how they're prioritizing you know, where their GPUs go. There have been some recent comments that AMD were prioritizing GPU miners. Now, obviously, you do not need me to tell you that the GPU market and the stock situation and the pricing situation has been. Mm, Let's call it interesting, shall we? Now, obviously, we are slowly on the road to improvement. Things are definitely better than they were a few months ago. Obviously, they're not back to normal. And both NVIDIA and AMD have been you know, keen to say that, yes, things are better slightly, but don't expect them to really get back to some sort of normality until 2022, which is obviously not what you want to hear, but it does take time to bounce back from the catastrophic situation that we had on our hands just a few months ago where cards were insanely overpriced and extremely hard to acquire. Now, basically, the AMD CFO, Devinder Kumar, denied that AMD was prioritizing GPU cryptocurrency miners over gamers and PC hardware enthusiasts, and these were comments made at the Deutsche Bank Technology Conference recently. And he said, quote, crypto, crypto, negligible. That's not a priority for us. We do not prioritize our products or make them for the crypto folks is not for the gamers, and that's a high priority from that standpoint. What's driven the growth, as you know, we had the Radeon 6000 series high-end GPUs introduced very competitive, and that is driving the growth in the GPU space. Now, obviously, NVIDIA have tried to tackle the stock issues, which obviously is caused by numerous different things. It's not just one answer, as with anything as complex and vast as you know an entire market, you know, worldwide market. But they did try to at least alleviate the issue by releasing some mining cards, and there have been some recent possible AMD mining GPUs spotted uh, on the market, but no official announcements from AMD that I am aware of. Now, I have seen some people argue that, you know, you don't even see the RX 6000 GPUs on the Steam hardware survey, but there's one big problem with that argument is that, well, that survey is optional. <laughs> so we can't really take that as, you know, yes or no in either direction. But I think a lot of people would welcome a similar situation to what NVIDIA have done. Now, obviously, miners are not solely to blame for the situation. As I said, it's a very complex issue, but obviously it does help, at least. If you have a miner specific cards, you know, you're good to have miners trying to snap up gaming cards and so on and so on. But obviously, it is way more complicated than that, and AMD probably have their hands full trying to prepare for RDNA 3, which obviously we've been talking about a lot on this channel. However, that's not the only thing that Devinder had to say at the Deutsche Bank Tech conference he also spoke on arm now obviously intel have or are going to be releasing i should say older lake which is not based on arm but is you know a similar idea of you know big dot little or big dot small or whatever you want to call it so devinder also spoke on the potentiality for them developing arm cpus and he said, quotes, but I'll tell you from my standpoint, when you look at compute solutions, whether it's x86 or ARM or even other areas, that is an area for a focus on investment for us. We know compute really well. Even ARM, as you referenced, we have a very good relationship with ARM. And we understand that our customers want to work with us with that particular product to deliver the solutions. We stand ready to go ahead and do that, even though it's not x86. Although we believe x86 is a dominant strength in that area. And this is definitely in line with something Lisa Sue said earlier this year. She said, quote, I think AMD has a lot of experience with the ARM architecture. We have done quite a bit of design in our history with ARM as well. We actually consider ARM as a partner in many respects. From an AMD standpoint, we consider ourselves sort of the high performance computing solution working with our customers. And that is certainly the way we look at this. And if it means ARM for certain customers, we would certainly consider something in that realm as well. So obviously neither of these comments you know, are confirming that yeah, they have anything in the works right now when it comes to an ARM-based CPU or something inspired by the ARM architecture or, or whatever. But I think it's really interesting to be honest and definitely in line with AMD's philosophy that they've had over the last few years. You know, Obviously when they came out with Ryzen and, and the Zen architectures and Zen Plus and Zen 2 and obviously now Zen 3, they have just continued to explore any you know sort of avenues that they can to get back in the forefront, you know, any unconventional ideas, any new technologies, obviously we see chiplets and obviously we've got the 3D stacked dies coming up at some point in the future for Ryzen as well, so AMD absolutely would explore ARM as well if they believed it would give them a leg up against Intel in the processor market, which obviously they've just built on an absolute 
dominant streak over the last few years and that may be coming to an end but we'll obviously have to wait and see but I would definitely be curious to see what would happen if AMD and ARM joined forces to perhaps make something rather unique but that's for the future to find out. But as we go from hopeful optimism to the future I unfortunately have some bad news as there's yet another chipset vulnerability that AMD has divulged information on that can allow non-privileged users, users excuse me, to read and dump some of the memory pages in Windows, and this technique allows the attacker to do various types of attacks, including circumventing standard KASLR exploitation, similar to Spectre and Meltdown, but the most worrying thing about it is it does allow the attacker to steal passwords. Now, this is all thanks to a coordinated disclosure with Kirio Coast Economy. Apologies, I probably butchered that pronunciation, but I gave it a good old college try. A security researcher and co founder of Zero Peril, and they basically exploited the vulnerability to allow several gigs of sensitive data from AMD processors as a non admin user. However, there is a bright side AMD has already prepared mitigations that can be downloaded as part of the latest chipset drivers or by using Windows Update to update the AMD PSP drivers. So if you are using a AMD processor, I would highly recommend you update your chipset drivers just so you do not fall victim to this particular chipset vulnerability. And just so you know, unfortunately, this does cover pretty much its entire modern processor lineup. So Zen 2, Zen 3, even going back to the original Ryzen processors. So I will, of course, include a PDF below that goes into the full details of this vulnerability report if perhaps you want to have a look see exactly what they discovered you know so it's very in depth and you definitely get your comfy pajamas ready uh, if you're going to sit down and read this but the main thing is that you just need to update your chipset drivers to make sure you're protected from this vulnerability but it's a little bit concerning that this is the second vulnerability disclosure in a couple of weeks, you may recall that there was a meltdown-like vulnerability that did require uh, specific software optimizations to patch, and that was left down to the software vendors by AMD to do. So it is unfortunate that two quite bad vulnerabilities were discovered pretty much on the heels of each other, but obviously mitigations have already been released for this one, and AMD basically told vendors how to circumvent the other one. Go watch my video if you missed the uh, skinny on that particular one. But with all that said, we're going to move on from AMD now to their arch nemesis, Intel, as we have a very interesting link for Alder Lake, thanks to Fanless Tech. Of course, you can find a link to their article and anything else I've sourced for this video linked below in the description. So obviously, we recently had a leak for the alleged specifications for the K-series Alder Lake chips, and today, thanks to, again to Fanless Tech, this potential specs for the T-series parts. Now, the main thing to note with these T-series is that they have a much lower TDP than the alleged specifications we saw for the K-series. Now, again, this is a rumour, so, you know, salt is definitely required, TM. But with all that aside, let's take a look at the leaked specifications. And again, these are not confirmed. These are just a rumour. So, we are apparently going to see several variants. The 12700T, 12700T, 12600T, 12500T, 12400T, 12300T, and 12100T. So, we're just going to go down the stack quickly. So, for the 900T, we're going to see 8 plus 8, making... That's for the cores, of course, 24 threads and a 4.9 boost clock. So that is just a hair, a hair of breath away from that glorious 5 gigahertz and 30 megs of L3 and again, 35 watts TDP. And just to kind of compare that to the 12900K that has a TDP allegedly of 125 watts. So these are much, much lower power. So making it pretty much perfect to anyone who wants to build a compact system with a lower power consumption. Anyway, for the 12700, we have 8 plus 4 cores, 20 threads, 4.7 gigahertz, 25 megs of L3, and once again, across the whole stack, we see that low, low TDP of 35 watts. 12600 is 6 plus 0, 12 threads, 4.6 gigahertz, 18 megs of L3. The 12500, excuse me, is 6 plus 0 again. 12 threads, 4.4 gigahertz, 18 megs of L3. 12400 is 6 plus 0 for the third and final time. 12 threads again, 4.2 gigahertz, 18 megs again. And the 12300 is when we finally see a step down in the cores, 4 plus 0. 8 threads, 4.2 gigahertz, 12 megs of L3. And finally, 4 plus 0 for the 12100. 
8 threads once more, 4.1 gigahertz, and once again, 12 megs of L3 cache. Now there is one very important thing to keep in mind with that 12900T, again with that 4.9 gigahertz. And obviously it's only 300 megahertz lower than the K-series counterpart, however, Fanless Tech did not share the base clock, this is only the boost clock, so the 12900T in all likelihood has a lower base clock, but that is a... You know, a fairly educated guess, but we just don't know because Fanless Tech did not release this information. Now, obviously, we should always wait and see for Intel to release the final specs, price, whatever. But these are very interesting, as I'm sure you'd agree. And obviously, a lot of people like to go for the full-blown K-series when it comes to Intel or the KFs. But T-series, again, has its place in the market for sure. Anyway, guys, that's me done for this video. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.